Hi, everyone. Welcome to another video. Thank you for being here. And um, I'm happy to film again. Um, I have been recently looking through the dashboard of all the videos that I made. Um, and it's almost 70. And now that I remember the fir first video that I made was for my Japanese students, and it was requested. And so I had no idea how to make it. I just knew that I had this questions that I need to answer and I needed to make like a series of videos but here we are like 70 videos later usually I'm making like a video a month although I'm also busy with my other work I always find time and it brings me so much joy to film and um yeah I'm I'm very grateful that um that my students are always giving me ideas and asking me questions and giving me suggestions. And so I, I have uh, this dialogue. But what I noticed is that, um, or actually the policy of YouTube that I checked, is that you need to have a thousand subscribers. That is what I um, found out to be able to do a live video. And actually recently I had a couple of uh, group classes with maybe like 30 to 50 students and sometimes um we end up like talking for two hours or two and a half hours and it's a it works so well they ask me questions i answer then they you know they talk to each other they fill in each other sometimes they they um they bring out something new uh, it's always like spending good time and brainstorming i'm able to answer all of the questions and i really enjoy it and so I had this idea to make live videos or live lessons here on YouTube. So if your package has expired, if you don't have money to book classes, it would be a good idea to meet like once a month, uh, maybe for a group, group class that will be like an hour or two hours long, but where I will have all of you um, live and I will be answering your questions live. How cool is that? That for me would be like so nice because I don't like talking to myself. It's weird at times. I do it, but um, I would really, really much to have like to have an input, and um, maybe I can correct some of the things on spot, like that that you need, or anything you know, English uh, learning related, ASL teaching related, related to the U.S. studying um news pop culture art mu like whatever i was talking in these videos you can basically ask me um or if you need a, a special advice you think that i will be able to answer that would that would also play uh into the live so if you have like any friends who are currently learning english who are trying to find sources uh you can always share my my channel so that uh, we can grow a little bit. So my goal is just to be able to do lives for free. <laughs> so um, you can help me a little bit with that. Moving on to today's review. So I'm twirling a book around. So this will be a book of this month. Um, I finished a couple of books this month, actually, because I started them earlier, but I'm having some other projects and I don't have time to read right now. So I just have to kind of go through the ones that I read that really stood out. And I already made a video uh, about one book um, of Dostoevsky, and this will be the second one. So um, I have a lot of recommendations for my students. They ask me from, they ask of me to recommend them something, of course, but then they always recommend me back. And I, as a proper um, gold digger, I just like to dig and explore and research. And in terms of um, books, this for me is like traveling almost. And I had this student from Argentina and she recommended to me a couple of books and I tried to read one of them in Spanish. I actually actually tried to read um, two, sorry. This one was the first. When I started reading it, I realized that my level doesn't reach <laughs> this book at all. So maybe I understood like every third sentence. Now I really... Um, was put in your shoes and I understand how hard it is to um, to try to kind of guess the meaning by only knowing a couple of words. And this author is very poetic. It's a complex, 
complex piece of art. So it is, it is not easy. And then I, I gave up. So I, I tried to find an English translation. I couldn't. So I tr tried to find a third language that I speak fluently, which is Serbo-Croatian. And this is the book that I actually bought. So this sounds so much better in Spanish. I, I'm aware and I'm aware that you should definitely read books in their original language. But if we cannot do that um, for the time being, we can always use a translation. And so um, the second book that I read in Spanish was also uh, recommended to me by her. And uh, it's a book called Ways of Coming Home uh, by uh, the author's uh, last name is Zambra. And um, that was easier to read because it's like a memoir it's a historical, almost a historical book with a lot of uh, chronological events. And um, that brought me a little bit more of satisfaction. And um, I was very proud of myself because I Googled only once in a while a couple of words, but I could understand. So this book um, was a challenge to explain. And um, I really was thinking about how am I going to explain this character um, because the book is written so poetically. I don't have those words to use. I cannot memorize all of them to describe the book well, but um, I was impressed. So for, for the longest time I was reading books that pretty much had very basic storylines, very usual characters. Of course there is like murder mysteries and love romances and historical novels, psychological novels, um, classics. But this one didn't fit in any of those categories. And that's why I think it's so important. And also it brought me so much joy. After finishing the book, I felt so uplifted in a way, even though the character from the book and the book itself describes one of the darkest uh, moments in countries. um history um the power of art and the power of words is so magical that it can bring all of that and turn it around so that's why i chose to talk about it so the author is called uh pedro lemebel and the translation of the book is i am afraid matador this sounds so much better in spanish like i said but it's actually a name of a bolero Latin genre type music. Um, and through the book, uh, the character is listening to a lot of these bolero and tango songs that you can actually Google later. So the whole, the book almost has a soundtrack and you, it can put you in the mood, which is um, so interesting. And then there is also a movie that's been made. Um, but I encourage, if you're interested in, in the topic, you should... Um, read the book first. So I don't know much about the author. I I did a little researching when it comes to his biography. Uh, so he was born in, in Chile in Santiago. He lived um, during this time of dictatorship. Um, I'm not sure how long did the dictatorship last, maybe for like 20 or 30 years. But he um, he was a he he was a member of a LGBTQ uh now we would call it LGBTQ plus community. So um, he was an artist as well. And so he was a chronicler, almost like a documentarist of this time. He was giving voice to the marginalized groups of people because those were the ones who were the most endangered uh, during the dictatorship. So basically after the president was murdered, um, before that Chile was a socialist country and then it sank into this dictatorship. And um, for a lot of these marginalized groups, um, including uh, extreme poverty, including uh, feminists, including um, all the members of LGBTQ, trans people, uh, single mothers, um, everyone who was not agreeing to this new regime that was pretty, as he describes it, it was very macho, machistic. Um, and basically every everyone who was thinking differently, including artists. So about his identity, I'm not going to go into details because I, I don't know. But um, now, in, in, this is a very uh, actual topic about how do you define someone. And basically you don't. So I, I can just say that he was an artist, an open thinker, 
and that he brought voice to the marginalized. And um, so he he did a lot of visual art. Uh, some of that reminds me of Frida Kahlo. So he created from this place of pain and um, being underprivileged for a long time. He, his works kind of uh, screamed for change. He actually uh, wrote a manifesto for uh, the new government. I'm not sure. Um, I think he spoke it in in front of the parliament. But this manifesto was exactly for those people who are uh, condemned as born differently, as unsuitable, and that any regime in the future, being a socialist or any other, should have a space for those people to to fly, basically, to be as equal as others. This one is a little bit more romantic. It is a romanticized version of that life. And so the main character, I really fell in love uh, when I started reading it. So the main character is a man in his 50s um, who is a homosexual. And he occasionally likes to dress as a woman. Um, and he is on the margins. He lives in this poor area on the outskirts of the city um, in this rundown house. And then as you read the book, you discover his background. Um, but in the beginning, we actually um, uh, find out that, you know, just normal things that you would do, like uh, getting together with your friends and enjoying music, partying, uh, dressing up, that was not allowed at that time. And you could actually get shot. A lot of people were killed on the streets if they got caught. So every night for them was dangerous or every night that they would go out. So um, his name is actually crazy from the front. And this is like a, a little bit of play of words, which um, Pedro uses a lot. So um, crazy because he was joking that all of the people who, who were different were considered to be crazy. So um, and the ones who were in the LGBT group were the craziest of all. That's how it was portrayed at that time. And so um, from the front means a member of the front because that was the opposition. It was a, a rebel movement of the youth and marginalized people at that time. But at the same time, in English, front means something that comes first. So we can say that he was as a character and Pedro as well, was in the front of the marginalized in a way. So it's like a, a very, very nice play, play of words. So the book uh, kind of goes between um, the life of the crazy from the front, uh, this main character, and also it goes back to the um, daily life of the president, Pinochet, I think that's how we pronounce it, uh, who was the dictator. And it kind of um, makes this parallel of the, um, the way... Um, the life of crazy from the front was going and how Pinochet was slowly losing his power and losing his mind. Um, those parts for me were not the most interesting just because I don't know much about the, the history of the country, but the parts where we, we are met and wh where we see um, crazy from the front, um, those parts are very, very um poetic. We know in the beginning that the life that he leads or she, sometimes he like she likes or he likes to be as addressed as she, is nothing to be desired for. So um, in childhood, uh, he was severely molested. His father was alcoholic. He was, um, he had to, I think he had to run from, from home. Um, and then he basically was on the streets. His life was almost over um he would probably get shot for in some of the clubs but uh, the group of his friends who were also from the lgbt uh, group save him especially uh one older guy who um who is teaching him how to i think crochet or um embroider embroidery um some of this like handmade work uh, is involved to make like a uh, table cloths and um, some some different textiles and that's how basically uh, crazy from the front survives so in in his free time 
he is doing orders uh, for rich people and he's making these big, uh, very beautiful tablecloths. The place where he lived is a rundown house. He is accepted by the neighbors because he is different, obviously, but that is not, that part of being different is not that uh, pointed out in the book. So he he just is the way he is, and this is how he uh, moves through life. So um, it kind of makes you understand that also that part is not important. Um, that what's important is, you know, what you have in your mind and how you uh, act on things. So we follow him in one of those nights out where everything seems so terrible from the outside, but actually the way they entertain themselves and the way they enjoy music and talk to each other and uh, they meet different men and um, they have fun, but at the same time, police is behind them at all times. And so in one of these parties, the raid happens. So there's police shooting everywhere and uh, Crazy from the Front gets saved uh, by this activist from Cuba. So he is a older student who uh, is part of this movement and they are organizing different actions across the city. Everything is very secretive because you could get arrested, disappear, murdered. He, as a student, empathizes with um, these marginalized groups and Crazy from the Front belongs to one of the groups. They become friends because Crazy from the Front has this house that is huge and run down and they need to hide some of the the materials of the movement which is very dangerous because all of them could get you know arrested and killed but crazy from the front um accepts the offer throughout the book she will be saving those um things in her house and so the reason why she does this is, of course, because she wants to be the supporter of the movement. But at the same time, she falls in love or he falls in love with this uh, Cuban activist. So the activist is very secretive. At the same time, he's not revealing anything about himself, including his real name. And um, Crazy from the Front knows this. So um, he is aware that this from the start is a love that is impossible He's so much older, you know, nothing to offer to this young man who has friends who are beautiful, who are students as well. And he's also not a homosexual. So um, this is a sad love story from the beginning. But the way Crazy from the Front is carrying himself and the way that he is describing the situation to himself is so admirable. So even though he has nothing, so he doesn't have work, he's a member of the most condemned group at the time. He is old. He doesn't look as good as before. He doesn't look as good as a woman, even though he would like to be. But at the same time, uh, the power that the personality has and the power that he uses to wake up every morning and to uh, stand up in front of the mirror. This is so admirable. And of course, he was not in love before. So this is his first love that comes later in his life. Uh, maybe this is something that uh, he was always hoping for. And even though it's impossible, he sees it as a blessing almost because the feelings that he has are very um, real and the feelings make him do things and um, they take him out of his comfort zone. And so what's going on is this play of pretend. The activist is pretending to like Crazy from the Front and Crazy from the Front is pretending to be a woman um, in this crazy play of, of interactions and emotions. They go together on this um, so-called picnic that is supposed to be for crazy from the front. She dreams that it would be a picnic that um, her lover or his lover would take him to, uh, but it's actually um, the real reason why um, the Cuban activists, the activist is doing this is to take photographs of the location where the president would be because they're planning an attack on the president. So he's basically throughout all the book he's using uh, crazy from the front and she 
or he knows it. So this would be a characteristic of a um, unconditional love, so to speak. So he has, he feels unconditional love towards Carlos. I think it's the name of the um, the activist. There is also a scene where um, uh, Carlos uh, tells uh, him that in Cuba everybody has birthdays together, um, so that um, nobody is left out and that uh, there is no judgment. And no, like, gossiping between families who has better birthdays, who cannot afford a cake, who can afford a cake. And so they all, like, everybody from the same street have birthdays at the same time. And so Crazy from the Front organizes a birthday um, and invites kids from the neighborhood and makes a cake for Carlos. And it's really, there are so many beautiful ways in, in, in which he tries to get closer to Carlos, knowing that. Um, or hoping maybe, maybe that this this could work, or that maybe Carlos will feel the same, even though he he knows that that probably this will not happen. And then there is also a time where where his friends from university come to bring more materials or more of these um, more of these uh, coffins filled with something uh, crazy from the front even gets a little bit jealous because now it's obvious that she's being used um but it is okay still so she's not refusing because it's 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 her fight as well there's also one time where uh, carlos uh, is asking her to bring uh, a package to this guy in the center of the city but there are demonstrations they are, there are demonstrations that are very dangerous, again, for especially for people like Crazy from the Front. And she dresses up as a woman uh, with the lipstick and high heels and this coat and a skirt. And she goes into the, these first lines. She's trying to cross to the other side of the, uh, the square and the police is there. And so she looks um, the police officers in the eyes and just says, will you please let me through? I need to go to the supermarket to do something. And so uh, they let her go. So there is this moment of fearlessness where she will basically do anything uh, for for love and for her side, uh, for the marginalized. And um, a lot of the times these tablecloths that she's making so delicately are ordered by the w uh, wife wives of the officers of the regime. And in one of these occasions where she's traveling to this very posh part of the city and she's carrying an order, um, so these tablecloths will be um, sir, will be actually presented at dinner. So um, they will be placed on the table for all the officers um, when they have a dinner together. So he actually um, sees the house and, you know, everybody there is treating him with respect at the same time, he, in his mind, he knows his work of art will be used to, you know, uh, to serve meals on people that he despise deeply will be eating from it. And so in the end, he decides not to, uh, to keep, he, he want he will keep the, the tablecloth. So he will not give it to this, even though he needs money because, so the, there is a very little being, um, told about the money or the ways in which Crazy from the Front is surviving, but it's very, very humble in a way. So there's a supermarket across the street where occasionally he will buy um, some food and coffee and milk, something that he needs for every day, but everything is so humble. And the way he, he his life, he's so grateful, first of all, for the friend um, who helped him and who taught him the the art of embroidery and um, you know textile making? It is so clear in the book that he is a man that doesn't have anything. It's, it is very rare that I find characters like that who are not only impoverished, in bad conditions, orphans, uh, homeless on the on the streets, of uh, sick. There is another layer of his um, misery in a way that he happens to belong to a group that is not not accepted by the regime and that his identity is not so who he is is not accepted in those times so he basically lives in wrong times in a wrong country but nevertheless to uh, kind of chase away the sorrow 
he lives his life as best that he can. And um, it reminded me a lot of the songs that were uh, that he was playing in the book and that later I listened to. Uh, the, the book itself reminded me of one of those songs of like the sad existence and unrequited love, but in a very poetic way that doesn't make you cry. It makes you actually happy about um, the strength of humans and how um, we can get out of these situations that are sometimes impossible. And also, also, and also Pedro here proves that he is so beyond all of that, that um, the way he is and the way that he understands people and life and social dynamics is so powerful. And that actually gives the power to the book itself. Nowadays, I think the situation has changed all over the world, but this is very um, contemporary topic about the um, the identity in its in its own, and about the rights that a human has to to be whoever and to do whatever, as long as it comes from the place of love. And so, towards the end of the book, it is clear that the front is organizing an assassination of the president um, because he will not, it is clear that he will not be taken by any other means. So there are no elections or anything like that. People are in despair. And this group of students um, and Carlos from Cuba is helping to organize that. And so after this assassination attempt goes wrong, um, he has to flee. And so She's listening the crazy from the front. She's listening to the radio and the news. You also needed to tune in to special radio stations because in the public media that was controlled, of course, and there was nothing uh, that you can hear there. So she had her channels where um, to listen to the um, the latest news. And she was so afraid that Carlos was going to get hurt. Um, and so um, they come from the movement and they tell uh, crazy that she needs to move from that house and that they will take her to a safer place. And so she needs to, uh, she will be taken to this safer place where Car Carlos will be waiting for uh, her. And um, so I'm altering between he and she because that is how it's written in the book. And uh, really the character has this double identity. At the same time, he's a 50 something year old man with uh, smarts um, and with uh, wisdom of that age, but at the same time, it has this very special feminine side that is awakened at times at, and that um, he wants to preserve and he feels so fond of. And so they meet in this um, beach town and they basically spend the last dinner together on the beach where this tablecloth is now used for their dinner, not the dinner of the generals. Carlos says that if she wants, they can uh, go together to Cuba. But at the same time, Crazy from the Front knows that there is nothing that she can expect from this relationship because, you know, he is not looking at her in that way. It, he's just finding a good ally and a good friend but she would want something more or he would want something more. So that it is clear that this illusion that Crazy from the Front has has to end. And it ends very poetically on this beach where Carlos is leaving and she she stays. She stays looking at the waves uh, on this beach and just kind of contemplating the impossibility of love and the impossibility of life for her and the impossibility of times and so it, it all comes down to very, very this very strong moment in the end. And so in this in the book as well, the way Pedro is describing the way um, crazy from the front loves Carlos uh, or the homosexual love is very. This is something that I've never encountered before. Maybe I haven't read books like this, but I was very open to to like see where. Um, where this will take me. Um, and I have to say, I was so surprised at how beautifully the desire and lust and this um, these feelings that are unable to, um, to be e expressed, that is described so beautifully in the book. And so we usually have this, I recently watched a series 
uh, where there is and a movie called Past Lives and a series called One Day, um, where you have like a very strong, strong romantic story between two people that are separated by time and space. Um, and it is also very beautiful. And this is the model of romantic relationships that we usually have. If you belong to a heterosexual group, but if you're a member of LGBT, um, then this topic is not new for you. But for me, who was not, you know, um, introduced to these types of books, uh, to have this book as a first one to read um, about the same sex love, it was something very, very eye opening. And um, it re really made me realize that the, the feeling of love is not connected to any gender in spe specific. It's almost like it's very much a universal feeling. And in this book, this is so beautifully described because Crazy from the Front has love ultimately. Will that love be? you know, fulfilled? Will that desire be fulfilled physically as well? It doesn't matter ultimately because um, the feeling of love changes you from the inside and it gives you power to move forward. So whether that love is centered towards the opposite sex or the same sex really does not matter. So in a lot of books by female authors, a male as an object of desire is described in a certain way. So the way the female would look at the man and what details will she see and the way um, that she will think about this possible relationship or um, love is very, very different than when a man describes it. So this point of view is so different than anything, like I said, that I read before. And it's also valid. It's it's really, really beautiful. So that's why I recommend you to, if you've never read anything like that, I really recommend you to. Because um, the way Crazy from the Front is satisfied just by passing through or sharing the same air as her object of desire is, is very magical. So if somebody was to ask me about, you know, what would be my favorite book romantic books of all time like this would definitely be in my top five just because of the beauty of the written word and the beauty of the descriptions and uh the ins insight that uh pedro gives into this world of um of being marginalized for multiple reasons and having courage to um to to still preserve your identity and to be proud of it and to be strong until the end and also to try to change lives of those who are similar to you who will potentially suffer like you what i also loved about the author is that a lot of the authors of that time who were homosexual were and who were artists at the same time were um hiding their identity in a way and through their work up until the end, um, that part of themselves was something that was hidden and was not shared in their work, which is, of course, okay. So uh, that's their decision. But um, this author in particular is very, very powerful because he's open about everything that he went through in his life. So that would be it for this book. I hope I was able to give it justice. Um, if not, then I hope I was able to interest you and in, to reading something new and being open-minded and to bring new ideas into your uh, life and work. If you're an artist, you will definitely be inspired by this. If you're not, um, and if you're interested to read something romantic, give this a shot. If you're interested in political situations all over the world or, or the history of the world, this is again uh, for you. So I definitely, definitely recommend. It's interesting to find uh, writers like this, so who are chroniclers, oh, that, that word is so hard to pronounce, um, who, are, who are the voices of their time and who give voice to those around them that they perceive and that they live with and see, but uh, obviously those people will never be able to tell their stories. So it's so noble and um, 
I, I hope there will be in the future more writers like this that kind of describe the time and the problems uh, of the time so that we can all learn from the mistakes of the past. And um, yeah, that would be all. So um, I will see you in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe because of the live from the beginning that I uh, mentioned. So yeah, talk to you soon. Bye.